On our premiere show, I spoke with Peggy Diamond Levy about one of the silent screen's first superstars, Mary Pickford. Peggy is joining me again today to discuss another part of Canadian film history. In another book, The Movie Years, Trenton, Ontario, 1917 to 1934, Peggy wrote of the rise of a film studio in Trenton, the Ontario city she has called home since high school days. The Canadian epic silent film, Carry On Sergeant, released in 1928, was produced there. Earlier in 1919, Tyrone Power Sr., father of the Hollywood heartthrob who became famous in his own right in the 1930s, made the first feature to be completed and released by a Canadian film company at the studio. Hi Peggy, I'm glad you've joined us again today. Hi Lorraine, it's a pleasure to be back. Around the same time, Mary was rising in her career as an actress south of the border, up in Canada, as you explained in the 2014 CBC radio interview Hollywood North, Trenton had numerous film company startups in 1917. These companies had good intentions, but they all soon folded. What do you think went wrong in 1917? Were the problems creative or financial? Oh, they were definitely financial. All of these different companies that moved into the studio had such high hopes, but, uh, you know, after one or two pictures, they ended up being bankrupt and moving out again. It seemed to be the, the story one after the other. Funding was hard to find back then, was it? Yes, it was, yeah. yes. In 1919, the Trenton Studios completed their first feature film, The Great Shadow, starring the great Tyrone Power Sr. Can you tell us a little more about that production? Well, it was um, one of the many Red Scare films that was made following World War One. It, uh, it told the story of uh, a gang of Bolsheviks that were trying to infiltrate an honest labor union. Uh, the picture was, oh, it featured a lot of, of local railroad workers in it, and even our mayor at the time, W.H. Ireland, played the mayor in the movie, too. It did. The movie did very well in Ottawa, Montreal, and Toronto. In fact, in Toronto, some of the manufacturing companies actually gave out free tickets to their employees to go and see the movie and uh, take in the, the moral that it was depicting. And so Tyrone Power Sr., he was uh, there for six weeks in Trenton, and I had read about uh, in your book that there was a mysterious woman known as the Beautiful Lady in his company. <laughs> now, do you know who this was at all? or No, we, not, not, there were never any names mentioned, but uh, the locals remember seeing her, and uh, they called her his, his secretary, but I think oh. there was probably a little bit more to the story than that. <laughs> so no one really ever knew what her name was? Uh, I've never found that, no. Oh. be interesting, wouldn't it? She will always be known as the beautiful lady. Yes, oh. and I'm sure he had more than one secretary. That, that's right. You know, I've seen the substantial trailer for Carry On Sergeant, filmed in Trenton in, in 1927, and thank you for recommending it, Peggy. You're welcome. It's quite a remarkable story and so well filmed. Some scenes bring to mind the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse from 1921 and the later All Quiet on the Western Front from 1930. Carry On Sergeant was a grand and expensive effort with director Captain Bruce Barron's father, who actually had little experience as a director, but some success as a popular writer during the Great War. Despite questionable practices and problems with funding, the film miraculously got made. Can you tell us a little more about the colorful Barron's father? Well, yes, he was a very famous cartoonist in England, and more known for that than anything, although he'd written a couple of plays. He was on tour in New York City when he was asked to write a screenplay that could be made here in Canada to qualify to be shown in British theaters. And uh, so he came up with the uh, scenario for Carry On Sergeant. He had been a, a war veteran himself uh, in, in the First World War. So he was familiar with the situations of war? Yes, and he was, with the trench warfare and, and all the rest of and it. And he could write very authentically uh, in the script for... Carry on, could, Sergeant. And, you know, you talk about the, the scenes in that movie. Uh, all the critics said that it, it was quite impressive. It was a very good war movie. Very realistic and, and depicted authentically. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep, the bombs going off and all the rest of it. Gas attack at Yeep, which is really central to the movie. And how were local people involved? You had mentioned about with actors and extras, and they were building. Uh, yes, well, with... some of them actually got parts as extras uh, or as parts, uh, you know, had a role in a crowd scene. There were a lot of crowd scenes in the movies. But 
but they also were employed digging trenches in the old mill yard uh, what that were used to be where Gilmore Lumber Company had a, a mill yard and, and at the time of the making of Carry On Sergeant in 1927-28 it was all full of cattails but it was good digging so they dug the trenches there locals would have been employed to do that but they also built sets and, and did painting you know that sort of thing for scenery even recreating like uh, European villages it, yes, it, it w- yes that was quite authentic I guess well, there's a little French town all the way down the hill and, and the little French villages with the cafes and the shops. The townspeople, they were also accommodating the film people and the players during their stay in town because there was not like there was a large hotel in Trenton, no, was there? No, and a, yes, you're right. A lot of them rented rooms in, in local, um, you know, in private homes. It would be exciting to have the movie stars stay there. There was also a place called Furhurst Manor, that uh, it was kind of a tourist home, and Baron's father stayed there for a while, and, and we had the Gilbert House Hotel in those days, too, so some of them, they, uh, people would, would be staying there, too. Now, are there any sets from that film r- remaining still in Trenton? Where scenes were shot? Mm-hmm. Well, Hannah Park is still there, and there were a lot of the scenes of the soldiers running through the woods. It was, uh, it's just adjacent to the building that used to be the studio. It's still here. And also the cold storage plant where the nighttime scenes of the trenches, a lot of them were filmed inside the cold storage. That's still here. Uh, other places, you wouldn't recognize them anyway. In, inside the theater or inside the studio it's, itself. Recently there was a tour given for the making of a documentary called Remembering the Sergeant. Mm-hmm. And the current owner took the filmmaker through that building and showed them where you know the dressing room to be, and, oh, wow. but you wouldn't recognize it as, you know, any part of the film business now. Right. Did that building become a, the community hall, or? Yes, it did for a short mm-hmm. period of time, yes, and then it became a textile company, and Trenton dying and finishing. And is there any kind of formal museum that's been set up to commemorate the, the Trenton studio years? Um, yes, uh, inside the building that used to be the town hall in Trenton, it's now called Trenton Town Hall, 1861. They've done a wonderful display just outside the little cafe, and it's all dedicated to the movie here. So they've got stills from the movie and any sort of memorabilia you could think of. They've done a, they've worked really hard in, in setting that up. Yeah, I'm wondering too uh, if if any film artifacts can still be found around town in the uh, in the, in a field or. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Like a helmet or a, you know. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> they had uh, Baron's father's megaphone. Oh, yeah. Uh, and a lot of people had, were, were using as uh, cookie tins the big film, the film cans. Oh, yes. But the, so they rounded up a few of them when they were setting up this museum. Well, it sounds like, like it would be an interesting tour. Mm-hmm. While the Canadian screening of the film was successful, there was no distribution of the film to the U.S., and U.K. screenings were cancelled. Why do you think Carry On Sergeant was unable to gain international and American distribution? There was some talk of, mm-hmm. of the Americans wanting to see that their own films continue to control the Canadian market, so that might have been the case. And also there was much controversy about the estaminet scene in Carry On Sergeant, where the sergeant succumbs to the wiles of the... You just see the two of them walking up the stairs, so it certainly in today's standards there's... <laughs> It's That's innocent. Not, yeah. It's not racy, but there was controversy about it, saying it sort of shed light, a poor light on the Canadian soldiers. So that but, didn't help the box office. And right, but Barron's father, he uh, insisted on keeping that scene in the film, didn't he? Yes, he did, yeah. yeah. He cut some of it, apparently, but no. He, it, you know, it's true to life. That's right. But the movie lost money, and yes, it just uh, it didn't make sense because it the reason for making it in the beginning was so that it could be shown in the British theaters, and yet uh, it was never sold to the, to the British. Well, it, it's the kind of film, though, really, even regarding the quality of, of the uh, segments I've seen, a film like that can only grow in popularity, so I, I hope that, um, you know, it will still be advertised, put out there. Is it uh, available, like, on DVD in its entirety, or is it... Yes, I think it is, yeah. from the lar- Library and Archives Canada, uh-huh. yes. 
Now, Carry On Sergeant was screened at the Belleville Documentary Festival last year on February 28th. You and video producer Doug Knutson shot an interview earlier that month to be included in Remembering the Sergeant, a documentary on the making of Carry On Sergeant. What was covered in the interview, and can you describe the filming experience? Well, I was one of the people that was interviewed. I sort of, we started out talking about that wonderful day in 1992 when we unveiled, the Historical Society here in Trenton unveiled the cairn that had been put up in front of the original studio, and Gordon Sparling, the assistant director on the film, was there. He was in his 90s at this point. So the, uh, the documentary filmmaker who interviewed me had a lot of footage that was taken that day, and we talked about it, and he interviewed a lot of the, the locals. And then we t uh, he and I talked about the, the, the beginning of the studio way back in 1917 and the different companies that came in and, and left. The remembering the sergeant it was is the name of his documentary and it's uh, it's really good. I, I he when after the unveiling we went up to the Dufferin Center for a big reception and a lot of the locals are st were still around and 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 talked to the interviewer about what they remembered about the filming of of the movie. So there's still a few people around who who were there at that there time. There were at that oh. time, 1992. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, right. Yeah. And, and as for you asked me about the filming experience, that was a lot of fun because we did it up in the on the top floor of the Trenton Town Hall, 1861, which has all been refurbished as a 1920s theater. So I was sitting in a one of the red plush uh, velvet. Seats and, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was a, a lovely setting. As to your own uh, film interest, Peggy, what were your favorite films as a child that you can? remember really, really liking? Well, I was brought up in Quebec, and so I didn't see movies until we moved out of the province to Winnipeg, and then I couldn't get enough of it. Fortunately, we lived kitty-corner to the Uptown Theater, and every Saturday I was there watching. I remember mostly the musicals, Singing in the Rain, and oh, well, just, you know, Doris Day and Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant. When I was a teen, I can remember um, that I had teen idols, Sal Minio and oh. James Dean. Mm -hmm. you know? And then now uh, for 2016, you recently saw Brooklyn shot in Toronto. What were your feelings about the story and its characters? Oh, I just loved it. I really did. I thought it was so authentic. And then when I heard that it was filmed, a lot of it uh, that looked like New York City was filmed in Montreal, but it was... Oh, it had such atmosphere and such wonderful scenery. Are there any other contemporary films that have been especially meaningful to you? Uh, they're not really that recent. I'm just thinking The King's Speech. I was so impressed with that. And I like movies about writers and readers, simple stories, you know. I remember 54 Charing Cross Road, I loved that. And, and Cross Creek which was the story of Marjorie Kinnon's Rawlings. Anyway, we toured her home when we were down in, in Florida a few years ago. But movies, when I discover movies like that, where, you know, there's a, a struggling writer in it, and, you know, even the Beatrice Potter movie, what was it called, Miss Potter, very recently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, with Renee Zellweger, I, that was wonderful. Those are the movies that appealed to me. Are, are there any current actors and actresses you feel have the same kind of star quality and appeal that Mary Pickford or Clark Gable had? Hmm. Maybe Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> He's it's an up and coming. <laughs> yeah. and, and I remember once when we were speaking uh, that you, you sort of thought that Meryl Streep was... Yes, Meryl yeah. Streep mm -hmm. and Colin Firth. Yeah, well, I think Meryl Streep is wonderful. She can do any part at all gamut and, and it, she does such a fine job. And on that note, Peggy, I'd like to thank you for being our guest on the Ultimate Movies broadcast show again and thank you for another wonderful segment sharing a few highlights from Canada's film history and about the silent film production that took place in Hollywood North. It's been fun and bye for now. Oh, bye for now, Lorraine. I enjoyed it too. Thank you. <laughs>